mic check. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five. Mic check, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Mic check, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I mean, I'm, so you're having the same issue with a different hotspot? I mean, at that point, could it be a streamlapse thing? Because, I mean, I can say the mold box itself is working fine. Yeah. So, I mean, maybe, could, I or StreamYard, I think he's, StreamYard. Mine's on in case you need to find another third option. My for for my hotspot. House Democrats had a productive meeting this morning. I'm operating uh, without a safety net of the vice chair who is on a plane in transit, uh, thanks to uh, weather and uh, uh, travel issues that I think a lot of members are experiencing this week. I just wanted to reiterate that House Democrats are in lockstep that we need to avoid a government shutdown, which would be a disaster for our economy and a disaster for hardworking American families. Last week, extreme Republicans in the House spent the better part of a week fighting amongst themselves just because they chose to prioritize baseless impeachments and censures uh, and expulsion votes over getting things done. They are just fundamentally incapable of governing. We're urging our colleagues on the other side of the aisle to work with us on a full year government funding bill that is free from policy changes and like restricting abortion access. Nothing can pass the House of Representatives without Democratic caucus votes. And House Democrats will not vote for the kind of poison pill policy changes that we saw during the appropriations process. We're grateful to Chairwoman Rosa DeLauro uh, for her work, uh, and also grateful to Leader Jeffries for holding the line on these policy riders in the negotiations with our colleagues across the aisle. With that, have to answer any questions. Brian. Mr. Aguilar, some of your colleagues have floated the idea that Speaker Johnson find himself in another motion to vacate situation, that they might be willing to support him in his speakership to prevent some of the chaos that we saw with Speaker McCarthy. 
Is that a view that you share? Is, is there any benefit to this idea of isolating the conservatives that threaten this from time to time so that governing can continue through the rest of the year? Well, I, I think it's an important point because we want this place to work. We want to govern. And that's what House Democrats want. That's what we want out of a speaker, by the way. Uh, and if the prior speaker would have been focused on governing, then we might not be in this position. Um, but we want to see this speaker uh, work uh, to govern. But uh, we have seen, uh, just like last week and uh, on other issues, he chooses to listen to the most extreme voices in his conference. And if you're going to listen to Marjorie Taylor Greene on policy, uh, then we're probably going to have some disagreements. So if he's willing to, to isolate uh, some of the most extreme voices in his conference to work, uh, then uh, I think we can have a somewhat productive year uh, and at least avoid the cliffs that we have and the government funding deadlines. Um, but if he's willing to listen to the most extreme voices in his conference, uh, then, uh, then that's another story. The House Democratic Caucus has not had any of these discussions. These are all hypotheticals you know, at this point, um, but I do want to reiterate that we want to make this place work. Uh, so to the extent we can find partners uh, that will help do that, uh, and a reminder that the continuing resolution, I assume this week, uh, that we're going to vote on that will need um, uh, a significant majority of the House Democratic Caucus, we will put up the votes for that, just as we have in the past, uh, to avoid the debt limit, uh, to avoid um, uh, government shutdown uh, previously with continuing resolutions. House Democrats are going to put up the votes to govern. Chad? Well, we want to we want to govern, and I think that's I, I think that's what we always come back to is we don't we don't mind this. Um, we know that they are a dysfunctional majority. Uh, we know that they do not have uh, actual votes to govern. The only thing that binds them together are some of the issues that you're seeing this week. Um, you know, uh, opposing women's reproductive freedom, opposing abortion care. Uh, supporting censures, uh, impeachments, those are the only things that bind Republicans together. So of course every week they're going to bring those issues up. It is, it is truly the only thing that can get them 218 votes on any given, on any given week. Now, when it comes to governing and actually pol passing policy bills, the House Democratic Caucus, we, we came here, we were elected uh, to make our communities better and to advance uh, and to make progress on so many significant issues. So of course we know that that's going to mean you know, compromise and discussion, and we don't mind uh, putting up votes uh, to keep government funded and to keep government open. We feel that that's uh, our responsibility, our, our mandate, our charge, and our, our duty. No, I think that there's pushback when, um, when we aren't part of the negotiation process and we're asked to put up a significant number of votes. And I think that's why House Democrats want to be uh, at the table. Uh, if you're going to ask us to help fund government, then this is truly going to have to be, um, you know, Washington words here, you know, four corners discussions on appropriations bills, uh, on, on tax policy bills, on the things that could actually move and, um, and have success. Uh, House Democrats deserve to be at the table because we're providing votes to uh, make these policies happen. Max? Uh, this morning we saw yourself and your Jeff Reed in the Republican Bill of Sovereignty in Pennsylvania. Can we expect other endorsements of progressive incumbents or facing challenges from the impact on the primary program? I don't think it should be a surprise. House Democratic leaders su support a uh, House Democratic member. Um, uh, I, I don't think there's much news there, but um, uh, I think, you know, from our perspective, uh, Summer Lee is, is a, a thoughtful member. Um, she's someone who has the back of working families uh, in uh, Pittsburgh, uh, someone who has the support of uh, unions and working families uh, in her region. And I think that's something that uh, we'll continue to support. And to the extent that we can be helpful uh, with members, um, that's, uh, that's what, what leadership is, is here for. So I look forward to helping. Okay. Given that the CR vote is coming up this week and that Speaker Thompson had previously briefed the FRA, do you 
Yeah, I mean, I think uh, in in this in this town, a, a words you know, person is their is their bond, and and uh, but unfortunately, sometimes we do see that that you know erodes. Um, you know, we saw that with the last speaker, um, but uh, I, I think we have we will always hold out hope that um, the agreement is the agreement, and that um, we will drop these numbers to the FRA to the Fiscal Responsibility Act budget numbers that we've all agreed to uh, but now comes the hard work you know now the appropriators have to work uh, to set these you know top-line numbers in each bill and we have to make sure that Republicans uh, don't um, you know continue to uh, want to tank our our uh, appropriations process by supporting uh, writers that are anti-abortion anti-LGBTQ I mean those are the types of things that will hurt this process and and delay the process and push us closer to a shutdown so but we hold out hope and we hope that the speaker's word means something uh, and that we will uh, have a fair appropriations process and that the committees uh, will do their work that's what is ahead of us and, and that's what we're hoping for Mike Yeah, and, and you've seen, you know, senators go on the record and to try to implore their House colleagues to, to keep an open mind. Um, I think it proves, you know, what we talked about earlier, which is, you know, there is a significant group within the House Republican Conference who will never get to yes on these issues. They will never get to yes on anything immigration related. They will never get to yes on an appropriations, you know, process that is bipartisan. Um, they just refuse to, to govern. And so I do think that they are often moving the goalposts uh, on these issues, but it is very clear with, for us that Leader Jeffries will represent House Democrats uh, at the White House. Uh, he will convey our positions and to the extent our votes are needed, um, he will convey what is necessary and important uh, for us to see. Uh, we know that the national security imperatives are important. Uh, we know funding for Ukraine uh, funding for humanitarian assistance um, uh, in Israel is important. Military aid to Israel, Indo-Pacific uh, priorities um, are uh, top of mind and important. We also know that the National Security Supplemental contains $2.3 billion for, for ICE, uh, $5 billion, over $5 billion for Customs and Border Patrol. So if Republicans were serious about um, addressing uh, issues at our southern border, uh, that would be a fair place to start, and I think that's what the president uh, is going to implore um, the legislative leaders to do. You mentioned immigration. How serious is the Biden administration in securing the border? Because, I mean, it's an argument to be made that they're failing the American people by not securing the border right now. Oh, we believe in rules, we believe in law and order, we believe in order at the border. Uh, like I said, um, if Republicans were serious about this, they would uh, support $2.3 billion in, in ICE funding, five additional billion dollars in Customs and Border Patrol. Uh, we're not going to fix this by, by building walls. We're going to fix this through broader use of technology, manpower, immigration uh, judges, uh, uh, humanitarian assistance, uh, aid to local communities uh, who are dealing with the front line. Um, uh, impacts uh, those that's how we deal with this but it has to be done in a, in a comprehensive way and unfortunately uh, as you've heard recently um, Speaker Johnson doesn't believe in, in anything comprehensive when it comes to uh, the border immigration and to follow up on that you know we're gonna have another impeachment hearing in the Secretary of Mayorkas do you have confidence in the Secretary to do this uh, I, I do but I just think it's so funny that you know we have the Senate negotiating with Secretary Mayorkas uh, on border solutions um, uh, in one chamber, and then in this chamber, they're bringing him up for impeachment uh, for not doing his job. So I just think that the that that um, 
you know, side by side is, uh, isn't lost on, on any of us who are actually paying attention. But again, we come back to the House, this is who the House Republican Conference is. You know, they believe in measures, impeachments. Um, that's what brings them together. It is truly the only thing that brings them together. And the committees uh, feel that they need to do this um, because it's one of the few things within uh, the committee that, uh, that they have uh, agreement on. Uh, and if you can't pass policy bills, uh, then they're going to continue to go down this parade. Um, who, Merrick Garland, um, uh, Secretary Mayorkas, I mean, you know, just name the cabinet secretary and, and plug in a month. And that's probably what the, what the agenda is going to be on the House Republican conference side. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna take the lead of some of uh, our leaders um, within the House Democratic Caucus when it comes to the uh, child tax credit. You know, we believe in uh, some of the business provisions to create jobs and to support our um, national economy and our local economy. Some of those provisions are incredibly uh, important. Um, but what we hold, you know, uh, in the highest regard is the child tax credit. Uh, leaders like Rosa DeLauro have been so passionate on these issues. Susan Del Bene, Richie Torres uh, have been leading House Democratic efforts uh, on this child tax credit. Um, but what we hold as the bar is the prior child tax credit that was enacted. Uh, 2.1 million children affected, lifted out of poverty uh, just by that child tax credit. So that's the bar by which we're going to judge things. And now we'll see what the language says. Uh, we'll talk to Richie Neal. Rosa DeLauro, uh, our leaders on this issue, but that becomes the baseline by which we judge things. Um, is it going to make things better in reducing childhood poverty or is it going to make things worse? Um, uh, those are the things that we're, we're concerned about. We know that negotiations uh, are important. We know compromise. Uh, compromise is not a, a four-letter word to the House Democratic Caucus, um, uh, but um, that's what we hold is, is our policy objectives, is lifting children out of poverty. Uh, that's what brings us together, and that's what this, we'll judge this policy on. Last okay. I mean, just following up on that, at this point, it seems clear that the tax package that's been proposed would do more than what's currently being done for children in poverty, but it's not going to come anywhere near the level that, you know, when parents were, you know, getting checks. And so I guess I'm wondering, is that enough? Is it enough to sort of do more, even if it's not as much as 2021? Is that something that House Democrats can still support? Well, again, we'll, we'll talk to our leaders on this issue. Um, you know, Rich and Neil will uh, continue to engage and, and keep us updated. Um, we'll uh, heed the advice of, of Rosa DeLauro and, and Susan Del Bene and, and Richie Torres and others who have been taking a lead in the Ways and Means Committee on this issue. Uh, those are going to be the, the important things. Um, but like I said, our, our goal, our objective is to lift children out of poverty. Um, we're going to judge it by that goal and what we did in 2021. Um, and then we'll have to make some, some decisions. Thank you so much. Check for the audience, Mark. Uh, yeah, 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 I got you. For sure, for sure.